Hey everybody and welcome to the Bullshit Party! And in this, the last episode of 2020, we're gonna be looking at the current podium vehicle, the Obey Omnis. And as always, we're gonna be looking at its exterior, its interior, the way it customizes in Los Santos Customs, and the way it performs, both before and after customizing it. And as we start taking our 360 tour around the car, it's time for me to give you some useless information about it. For example, it's a part of the sports category in GTA Online. Its usual sell price is $701,000, and I like sandwiches. Wait, that's not related to the car, is it? But what is related to the car is seeing how interactive it is, basically what we can open on it. And I have to say that on the Omnis you can open both doors and the hood. And speaking of the hood, look what lies beneath it. I don't know for certain, but I think that's what true power looks like. And speaking of that, the main inspiration for this car is the Audi Quattro. And one more fact I want to share with you about the car before we get in it, is that it was released in 2016, so 4 years ago as of the making of this video. And that's probably gonna have an impact on the customization when we get to Los Santos Customs. And no, this wasn't a cut, the game just decided to teleport me in. But anyway, here we are in the interior and it looks very off-roady. And it sounds... I'd say very off-roady as well. I'm really excited to see how we can customize this at Los Santos Customs, so without any further ado, let's get going. And as usual, at the start of our journey, it's time to see if this is a real-wheel drive or a nor-wheel drive or, ugh, a front-wheel drive vehicle. And it's confirmed the Omnis is a four-wheel drive car. What that means is that all four wheels have power all the time. Not to be confused with an all-wheel drive car, where the power of the car is distributed throughout the different wheels depending on how it handles. And if you want to hear my first impressions of this car, you need to like the video. Thank you. So it definitely feels very solid and very stable on snow. And keep in mind, I'm talking about the stock vehicle here. Honestly, my first impressions were, why wasn't this the podium vehicle last week? It would honestly make so much more sense seeing how this is a four-wheel drive vehicle and it's snowing outside. Or even if it wasn't presented as the podium vehicle. Give it to the players for free like you did with the Brioso 300. And for those of you who haven't seen it, I'm gonna put the review of it right here. But spoiler alert, the main issue that I had with the vehicle was that on snow, it was barely drivable. So once again, I have to question the decision to make it the Christmas gift. But anyway, back to the Omnis, I really like how this car handles in these conditions. The main issue I have with it so far are the brakes, they're not that good. But hopefully, that's something that we can upgrade in Los Santos Customs. Speaking of, time to get in. And here we are in Los Santos Customs and the weirdest thing happened. Even though I bumped and scraped and crashed the car on my way over here, it didn't charge me for the repair. Weird. But one thing that isn't weird is that we're gonna upgrade all the performance options up front. This way we're not gonna forget anything performance wise at the end. And this way we can also familiarize ourselves with all the customization options that we're gonna do to the car. Speaking of, and as I said in the beginning of the video, this is a 2016 released car. And this is confirmed with the first customization option. You're basically getting a binary choice, do you want a new exhaust or not? The next option we're gonna be looking at are the liveries. And you guys probably know that I'm not the biggest fan of them. So this is probably just the perfect opportunity to get rid of them altogether. And after we're done with this, we're going to the best customization option. And of course I'm talking about customizing the license plate to be black and yellow. And after we're done with that, we're back to the regular lame customization options like the spoiler. Something I want to mention here that I found peculiar is that the traction bar doesn't increase or decrease depending on the spoiler you selected, or even if you remove it altogether. And I can't really recall, but I think this is the only vehicle that I've seen this on. But if I'm wrong, I'm sure you guys are gonna let me know in the comment section down below. You rude pigs. And even though we're going for a rally car here, I went with the sport suspension, which is the lowest one. The difference between the suspension heights was very minimal, so I decided to go with the one that I think looked the best. And speaking of things looking their best, it's time to change the wheels on this one. And since I do consider this car to be an off-road vehicle since it's a rally car, I went with off-road wheels. And to the best of my knowledge, the wheel type does not impact the way the car handles. But what does make an impact on the way the car handles is the tire design you choose for it. There. Now the car handles twice as well and is three times faster. It was a horrible joke made by the Bullshit Party Incorporated. The Bullshit Party absolves themselves from any responsibility due to a miscommunication in this video. Peace and love, peace and love. Huh. That was, uh, new. But anyway, back to the video, aside from the weird fact that the driver's window isn't tinted, it's time to get to respraying the car. And for that, I'm gonna consult my poll that I posted a couple of days ago, asking you guys what color do you want to see this vehicle in? Oh, come on, do we need to do it again? It's not funny anymore. 
fine. No, not that poll, not that one either. Yes, that one. And in that last poll, over 5,000 of you voted for the color. Although over 20 million are subscribed to the first one. Sad. Anyway, the color you guys voted on was Midnight Blue. Matte Midnight Blue. And I gotta say, I really like it on this car. And for the secondary color, I wanted to go with something that's gonna contrast the Midnight Blue. So let's see what secondary colors this vehicle has. Oh, the secondary color doesn't matter, does it? Okay then, so let's slap an orange color on that. Go to the rims, change the rims to match the secondary color, and then we'll be done with Los Santos Customs. Now it's probably a perfect time to put in an elevator music, as we're waiting for me to finish customizing the vehicle. Or even better, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, now it's probably a good time to remind you to go and subscribe. Come on man, it's free. And I don't know about you guys, but I really like how this one turned out. So on a scale from pancake to a crepe, I'd give this one a maple syrup. But most importantly, I want to know how you guys feel about it. How would you rate it between a pancake and a crepe? And in case you missed that because of my rambling, I just want to point out that all the lights on the front of the vehicle are functional. But more importantly, let's talk about the performance of the vehicle after we upgraded all the performance options. First of all, it definitely doesn't feel like the fastest vehicle in its class. And that's okay, I don't think it's supposed to be. It does feel, however, like a very capable and very fun and very reliable rally machine. Just the way the car hugs the road is something that you need to experience in order to understand. And even though we couldn't increase the traction bar by, for example, adding an extra spoiler, as a matter of fact we removed the original one, the car still feels extremely stable. The one thing that I can say and that I've noticed, and it's important here to say that it's on snow, is that the car doesn't stop very well. Once again, this might be different in a couple of weeks from now when the roads are clear, but for now, the vehicle just doesn't stop very good. It does however allow you to make very predictable turns and corners, and that's thanks to the all-wheel drive system it has. Honestly, I can ramble on and on about this vehicle, how for example I got it for free from the lucky wheel cause it's the current podium vehicle, how it usually costs 700,000, how if you got the starter pack for GT Online you got it for free, so understandably there are people that are annoyed that this is the current podium vehicle. But I think the takeaway thing from this vehicle is that it's very capable. And that's both on and off the road. Provided of course conditions are very good as they are right now. I don't know how it's gonna do on dry roads. So in closing, I think if you get this vehicle for free from the lucky wheel or if you got it from the starter pack, I think that's great for you. Even though it's not gonna be able to compete or keep up even with any of the top performance in its class, it's still a lot of fun. And if you're like me, this is how you play the game, you just free roam. And for that, I gotta say, this is one of the best vehicles in the game, just because of how capable it is. And of course, this is only one man's opinion and you should form your own based on your experiences. I'm just sharing you my thoughts and my first impressions of the first two and a half hours I spent with this car. And I think with all that, it's time to not only wrap up the video, but the entire year. And I gotta say, thank you so much to everybody who not only supported the channel by watching the videos and liking them, but also interacting in the comment section. We reached our goal for 25,000 for this year, so let's aim for 100,000 next year. Or maybe even 101,000. Or if I'm feeling very adventurous, 102,000. But definitely not more than that. Once again, hope you guys had a good Christmas, hope you're gonna have a good New Year's, hope Santa didn't put you on his naughty list, and with all that said and done, I'll catch you guys next year. To be honest, I don't know what I was thinking here. I kinda turned the video into a jackass stunt.